Good morning and welcome on January 7th, 2024. I'm Steve Finland on behalf of the First Church of West Bridgewater. Today we have no Sunday service because of the sleet, ice, and snow, but I'm still going to record the sermon I prepared. I also want to invite everybody who's in the Massachusetts area to come to West Bridgewater for our Sunday services at 10 a.m. All are welcome. And all are welcome today as I read you the sermon and we sing a hymn which is It Came Upon the Midnight Clear number 128 in our hymnal and then we will have a sacrament as well and the sermon is called Heavens Torn Apart Mark 1 6 to 11 now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. May God be pleased with my interpretation today. This reading from Mark has John proclaiming that one greater than himself will come, of whom he is unworthy and who will baptize people with the Holy Spirit. We don't know if it's right after this or, or some days after this, but then Jesus came to John to be baptized in the water. And as he came out, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. Then there is a voice from heaven saying, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. This same voice will speak over Jesus at the Transfiguration. Hearing the voice of God is a miraculous occurrence. We don't know if any of the people beside the river saw the Spirit descending and heard the voice speaking. Both Matthew and Mark only say that Jesus himself saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending. It's not clear if anyone besides Jesus heard the voice. In the Gospel of John, however, John the baptizer sees the Spirit descend and hears a voice, whether then or at a later time we don't know, telling him that this is the one who will baptize with the Holy Spirit. So John, who already knew something about Jesus' special role, had that knowledge confirmed by a divine voice, according to the Gospel of John. John the baptizer has an extraordinary experience, hearing a voice and seeing the Spirit descend upon Jesus. God granted these experiences to him. We read how the Magi were guided to Judea to find a promised Savior, and how Simeon was alerted by the Holy Spirit to the coming of the Messiah to the temple. Again, God guided certain people to recognize the Messiah. There have been many real and intense experiences of spirit messages to people. What about us? Can we receive such messages? Possibly. Usually we only have such experiences if we are at a crucial crossroads in our lives, or even in a serious crisis. It seems that we receive guidance when we most desperately need it and are actively seeking God's will. But we need to be careful and to be ready for the possibility of being misled by imagination or by the power of suggestion. When we see selfishness and egotism tainting the messages that some people claim to have heard, we have reason to put those down to the experience of auto-suggestion. Actual prophecy is fairly rare. I do believe in the supernatural experience that Jesus and John had when the former was baptized by the latter. It is a key moment in the beginning of Jesus' public ministry. God takes a hand in publicly affirming Jesus' mission. The baptism is one of the two events celebrated at Epiphany, the other one being the Magi meeting the Christ child. Epiphany means appearance or manifestation. 
There was the manifestation of the Spirit at the baptism, and there was the appearance of the Christ child to the first group of Gentiles, the Magi. Both events have been celebrated at Epiphany, which was technically yesterday. How does all this become meaningful for us? What is Epiphany for us? I think we can contemplate the idea of an appearance or manifestation of God, whether in the life of the Messiah or in a spiritual experience that you have. Hold up this idea today as commemorating an appearance of God and contemplate how that can be meaningful for you. Is there some event in your life where you felt that God got through to you? Was there a time in your life when you experienced a deep change, when you were saved, or when you got some kind of message from God? Did you have an experience where you recognized Jesus as divine? Do you sometimes find yourself having deep thoughts while you hear the gospel read, or even when you hear a hymn? I think we too are meant to have personal revelations from time to time. God is still speaking. That is the slogan of the United Church of Christ. God is still speaking. Open your hearts and be ready to hear some kind of message from God, even if it is only the whispering of the Spirit, telling you to love or forgive or have faith. The baptism of Jesus was an extraordinary moment. God marked the beginning of Jesus' public career with a public recognition of Jesus. Our revelations are bound to be less spectacular than this, but maybe no less special to us. Has God warmed your heart or spoken to your mind? Treasure the very personal relationship with God that you have. Thanks be to God. And now let us have communion, where we commune with the Spirit, with Jesus, and with each other. This is the joyful feast of the people of God. Men, women, and children of all ages have come from north and south, east and west, to sit down at Christ's table. Jesus invites all to participate in this remembrance of his last night on earth. We give thanks, God of majesty and mercy, for the life and knowledge you reveal through Jesus Christ. On the night he was betrayed, he sat with his apostles at table, and he said, I have eagerly desired to share this Passover with you before I suffer, for I tell you I will not partake of it again until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. He took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he said, This is my body. As the grain for this bread was brought together from many hills and combined into one loaf, so also his church is gathered from many parts of the earth and is meant to be one. Jesus, we ask that you send your spirit on this, that it may be for us the bread of heaven. He took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he said, Take this and divide it among yourselves, for I tell you, I will not again drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. Jesus, you said, Do this as often as you do it in remembrance of me. We ask that you send your spirit on this cup that it may represent for us the cup of salvation. God, sanctify us through communion with our risen Savior. Jesus, we hold on to your promise that we will someday sit down with you at banquet in your heavenly kingdom. Thanks be to God. And now 128 from our hymnal, it came upon a midnight clear. It came upon a midnight clear, that glorious song of old. From angels bending near the earth to touch their harps of gold. Peace on the earth, good will to all. 
from heaven's all gracious King. The world in solemn stillness lay to hear the angels sing. Still through the cloven skies they come with peaceful wings unfurled, and still their heavenly music floats o'er all the weary world. Above its sad and lowly plains they swiftly on the wing. A rest beside the weary road, and hear the angels sing. For lo, the days are hastening on, by prophet bards foretold, when with the ever-circling years comes round the age of gold, when peace shall over all the earth its ancient splendors fling, and all the world send back the song which now the angels sing. When all the world will send back the song which now the angels sing. Thanks be to God. And so join me in an attitude of prayer. Jesus, we pray for people in our congregation who need strength and recovery. We pray for Warren and Winnie Carol and Mike. Uh, we pray also for people in our audience, such as Ryan uh, and Bob and Louise. Bless them all. Jesus, make them all healthy and strong. And we pray for peace on earth, even though our earth is so far away from peace. But we know you are the peacemaker. You are the Prince of Peace. And so we turn to you with our genuine sincerity and we ask that you may help us be peacemakers and we say the prayer you taught when you said our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And so I invite you next week to come attend our church in West Bridgewater at 10 a.m. And go with God throughout this week and throughout the, the new year. Bless you all.